It was the most talked about house in Australia, home to 12 strangers and a TV audience of millions. And now, 10 years after it first opened its doors, the Big Brother housemates are back together again. I absolutely loved it. I'd do it again and again. I've never laughed so much in my life. I've never cried so much. We what didn't think anyone was watching. I had a ball in there. I didn't want to leave. I just had so much fun. It was the show that put reality TV on the map, turning unknown Aussies into national stars. It was mentally straining, but I loved it, and I'll do it again. Over eight years, more than 100 housemates lived in the Big Brother house. There are some that we'll never forget. For the first time, they've come together to reveal the secrets. You guys are all surprised to hear this. The truth's coming out here, folks. <laughs> the scandals. You cannot sexually vilify another housemate. The love stories. Yeah, I did fall in love. And all the magic moments that made Big Brother such compelling viewing. Come on. Hey. It was a revolutionary format. A bunch of random wannabes locked in a house together. Their every move recorded by dozens of cameras, running 24 hours a day. Every week, one would be voted out by the public with the dreaded words... It's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. Why is it, do you think, that, that the show was so successful for so long? It appealed to everyday Australians because, hey, these are everyday Australians. Mike Goldman was a host on Big Brother and narrated the daily show from the beginning. Mike, which was your favourite series and why? You can't really take away from the excitement of the first series because it was so new and no one knew what was going to happen. Alright, they're going into the house! The first 12 contestants went into the Big Brother house in 2001. Among them was Pete Timms. It was a bit of fun that accidentally got out of hand. <laughs> Pretty weird for us, especially because we were the first one. Yeah. We were waiting the whole time for Big Brother to say, this is Big Brother, the show is dreadful, no one's watching That's it, what we get out. That's we always thought, <laughs> we always thought can... that. <laughs> 1.4 million people were watching that first series, tuning in every night to see what the housemates were up to. But one contestant in particular captured their hearts. <laughs> this place makes you crazy. I just feel really weird, I can't believe I'm still here. Did you have any concept about how popular you were outside the house? I had no idea. And there was just like hundreds of people lined up wherever I went. Like I just, I still can't, it still feels weird because I feel normal. Yeah. It, was, it was like Beatlemania. <laughs> it was nuts. It was just nuts. <laughs> Sarah Marie Fideli was Big Brother's first true superstar. Where did the bunny ears and the bum dance come from? Well, there's four girls in my family and we've all got like fair size. Bum bums, and um, we'd see who could like wiggle our bottom in a circle and like slap our bums, like see who could wobble it the best. And I was always good at it because I had the wobbliest bum. So then I was in the house board and I was saying to myself, How can I send my sisters a signal that I'm happy? So I thought of a moment that all of us were always together. So I started doing that. And I remember the first night I did it in the bedroom with Ben, and he was disgusted in me. Wasn't he? He's, he's, I think it was the first night I was in It was the scary. Room. Do you still do the bum dance? I haven't done it in a very long time. And I have a Go feeling on, you're about yeah. to ask me. Yeah. Do All it, of Australia do wants it, to see it, Sam Marie. Hey. Yes, go on. Hey! That's it! Hey! Hey! Also in the house that first year, Gemma Gornard ever remembered for just one thing. Gemma, where did the lip gloss come from? I'm a makeup artist and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working on shoots all the time and, and they said, what, was, what would be the one thing that you would not want to be in the house without? And I said, oh, I don't know, probably my lip gloss. I don't do it as much, <coughs> like every girl probably reapplies a lip gloss, but yeah, anyway, I don't know. I didn't have my finger permanently stuck to my lip. Or did I? Maybe I did. <laughs> probably a little bit too much. <laughs> <But that's it. laughs> Who could forget this infamous scene, dubbed the Dancing Doona? Underneath were Pete Timms and Christina Davis. What was going on underneath that doona, Pete? Ah, that is the... <laughs> has been asked many a time, that question. 
Um, there's only two people who know the answers to that, actually. I've I do, because told... I was like next to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know. You think you knew. I remember pretending I was sleeping, going, oh, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> you I don't care about that. my career anymore. I you, care about Jess, you. you do. No. In season two of Big Brother, real love blossoms. Jess, you, you fell in love in the house? Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, I did fall in love. Tell us about it Marty. It all turned pear-shaped after the show. <laughs> in the house, yes, I was in love. Jess Hardy and Nathan Martin, known as Marty on the show, fell head over heels right before our eyes. Oh, well, I'm a dirty home wrecker, clearly, because he had a girlfriend, but I didn't realise how serious he was with the girlfriend until I got out. So at the time there was just a chemistry and I guess when you're stuck with someone for that long and Dad said, couldn't you wait three months? And I said, could you? Seriously? <laughs> when they left the house, Marty and Jess got married. Keeping up the TV theme, they even made a documentary about it. But the fairy tale wasn't to be. I believed that we were seriously an item. Like, I was in love with him up there. Travelled around Australia, landed where he wanted to be. And you that's remember, no, you shot a TV fall. show. Yeah, yeah, well, it was, was fun Jess then. And, Jess was and Marty real. getting married. That was real. But the aftermath that followed, going back to all his footy mates, his local pub, he fell in love with the barmaid, they've now got a kid, they're shacked up together. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how much further do you want me to go? So that's where I'm at right oh. now. <laughs> do you regret hooking up with Marty on the show? I can't say I regret anything, because you learn from it, don't you? Yeah. The winner is Peter. Yeah. The second series was eventually won by Peter Corbett, a quiet achiever who opened up about the tragic death of both his parents. I remember the exact moment both mum and dad passed away. I was there. You copped a bit of flack for, for, for flying under the radar and maybe, you know, using the death of your parents for, you know, to get some sort of sympathy with the public. Was that some sort of strategy? No, my parents passed away a year earlier or a year and a half earlier and um, I, I did talk about it. You know, I maybe talked about it once out of the 24-hour period. Um, for a minute, and that was the minute that Big Brother decided to put on mm -hmm. because it was interesting. Did you have a good time at the party? <laughs> yeah, I didn't get too drunk. The next winner was, well, one of a kind. It's Reggie! Reggie, why do you think the Australian public fell in love with you? Oh, Genuine. it's my annoying voice. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 oh, I don't know. Genuine. I think yeah. because I say I get in trouble a lot because I say what I think. Tazzy's Reggie Bird was the rough diamond who became a national treasure. I wanted a holiday. Because <laughs> I was working in the fish and chip shop and I just wanted a holiday because I only had um, two days... Uh, break a year. I don't want to go back to my life. <laughs> 86 days later, she reluctantly emerged to a rock star welcome. Oh, you're a legend, Even though you'd been in there the whole time, you weren't sick to death of the house by nah. the end? I was scared to go back out into the world. It was really mm. scary. I'd, I just... I just didn't want to leave. When you did go back out of the house, was it the same world no, from when you went in? No, I went back to the shop and I tried to go back cooking egg and bacon rolls and hamburgers. <laughs> and, and everyone would just come in to the shop and they just stand there staring at me. They just wanted to come in and look at me. Like, what, are you, what are you doing there for? Like, I'm trying to work. <laughs> um, <laughs> something. What? Yeah. It's, 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 everyone just wanted to look at me. Reggie, what did you do with your prize money? When I was in Tassie, paid off the house and left that to the ex-husband. Moved to Sydney, couldn't go and get a job because you just get mobbed everywhere I went. Yeah, it's all gone. <laughs> it's gone. Now I just buy lotto tickets and hope it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> hope I'm going to win again, something again. Alicia! At 21, Alicia Coucher was the youngest winner of Big Brother. What did you do with the prize money? I've actually only just spent it. I, everyone asks you that five minutes after you get to the house, and I still didn't know. But I actually bought a hairdressing salon, which I always inspired to do. One million dollars. In season four, the producers upped the stakes dramatically, offering the last housemate standing one million dollars. When it was announced, the, the look on everyone in the crowd's faces, the housemates, we, we were just shocked. The winner was Trevor Butler, who had a surprise for everyone when he came out of the house. Bree, will you marry me? Yes? yes. 
Were you nervous? Yeah. Because it's one of the biggest moments of your life, and Too you're sharing it with. Said no in front of everyone. Yeah, if everybody said no, I would have went. What? Uh, <laughs> she um, stuttered for a bit because no. she didn't know what to do. She was in the middle of everyone, and I actually said, "You're going to say yes, yeah, so you're going to leave me here." <laughs> what up? Come on. <laughs> and then she goes yes, and then yeah. He's just, right. he's just Trev's got two kids now and has used the prize money to set his family up for life. There's been plenty of controversy over the years. Merlin Luck's silent protest live on air was surely one of the most awkward moments in television history. Merlin, can I ask you a simple mathematical question? This segment is five minutes long. Are you going to speak at all? You can see him on stage, just shaking, yeah. just shaking. so nervous. And it was clever, like, nobody gets anything past Big Brother. Like, we had and no idea. We were yeah. in the house with him for, you know, such a long time, and it was so out of character for his personality type. Mm, he is yeah. the loveliest guy oh, in yeah. the world, and people, um, like, give him a, a lot of stick for it as well. It's time to go Bree. Bree Aimer was evicted after a miscount of votes and found herself back in the house for a second chance. They said, oh, there's been a mistake, um, you've got to go back in. And I went, I don't want to go back in. Like, and I said no initially. And they said, well, you could basically sue us because you could have won the million dollars. <laughs> and, and so, I, do you know what, I, this is so funny. I, and I went, okay, well, if I'm going back in, I want a quarter pounder and some canteen. <laughs> and they were like, okay. And they, so they got me those things. And now I'm like, I probably could have said I want $50,000. <laughs> In an uncut version of the show, we saw the housemates nude and uncensored. There was outrage. Well, here's a great opportunity for Channel 10 to do a bit of self-regulation and get this stupid program off the air. What a great endorsement for a show. The Prime Minister of the country, the silly old fuddy-duddy going, get the stupid show off the air. Like, who would want to watch a show that he watched anyway? Lie down and shut your eyes. Why? Just lie down and shut your eyes. What are you going to do? You don't want to be in turkey slap me, are you? No. One incident was truly shocking. Late at night, John and Ashley acted inappropriately with Camilla Severi in what became known as the turkey slap incident. I've just got turkey slapped. <laughs> we were a, a group of young people who'd had a few drinks. We were having fun together. The fact was that we also got given a set of rules before we went into that house, and unfortunately a rule got broken. You cannot sexually vilify another housemate. And that's what occurred. So I, I don't dislike the guys. I... In fact, I have no issue with them at all. And probably if it had happened at a party on a Saturday night, well, we probably would have, you know, laughed about it. But at the end of the day, Big Brother chose to remove those people because they'd broken a rule. I went nude. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Good girl. Good? Yeah. yeah. Whether or not to go nude on national television was always a difficult dilemma for the housemates. Gemma kept covered for 70 long days, refusing to take her clothes off even in the shower. And I actually had a conversation with our executive producer before we went into the house and I told him, I said, look, I feel really uncomfortable with this and, and I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm not going to get naked in the house. It just feels really uncomfortable to me. And he said, well, you do know you're going to attract more attention by not doing that. And I said, I don't really care. I said, I just don't. For me, it, it doesn't feel right to me to do that. I, I felt like I had to because, you know, you got... Dirty undies. Yeah. Oh, you just scrubbed. You have got to scrub. Yeah. You have to scrub yourself. Just for hygiene. Oh, my God. Yeah. But what was the first thing? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. wish I knew what a Brazilian was before I went in. <laughs> As the years went on, Big Brother constantly twisted the format to keep the viewers and the contestants mm. guessing. So there are two Logans. One in the house and one here in the isolation room. Now this is because the two of you are um, one person. You're basically. identical twins. Oh, we're identical you? twins. Yeah. The so-called Logan twins, David and Greg Matthew, went into the house in season five. They fooled the housemates into believing they were just one person. We went to such large lengths, tanning ourselves, drawing tattoos on, dyeing our hair. Mm. And just sort of sitting there thinking, this is not going to work, seriously, how is this going to, then who's going to go in first? When we realised and we twigged, I spent at least a week just looking, checking <laughs> everyone's yeah. moles and, and stuff. And you thought like you were that smart too. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Logans! <laughs> in the end, the twins won the prize money. But the most cunning strategy seen on Big Brother was that of journalist Tim Brunero, 
a secret he's kept from his fellow contestants until now. I thought about it a lot before I went on. Like, I sat down with you know Chaz from a chaser, and we planned how to because I never really watched a show, and he said wow. you've got to spend mm. you've got to spend the first couple of weeks it's really. It's got a lot. There's like a log <laughs> jam. There's like a log jam of people trying to get attention, and so you should video. fly under the radar the first couple of weeks. Then you should sort of unfold your character. We had a whole <laughs> wow. lot of like. Um, <laughs> did he just say, did he just, did he just, hold on? Did he just say Chaz from the chaser was the architect of his Big Brother experience? It works. What? I thought they were funny. You're keeping it real, and you're. Honesty is not a real positive thing. Tim deliberately used fake storylines to win support, betraying himself as a geek who had a hopeless crush on the beautiful Kate. There was a whole lot of do's and like rules that we had, like do's and don'ts. Like, it's okay to have a fight with someone, but you must close it off. You must go and have closure to it. Like little things like. No, 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 but you guys are all surprised to hear this. Yeah. Dwarfed by the beefcakes in the house. Tim started pumping iron in a bid to get muscly. All an act designed to stay popular with the voting public. The greatest moment for me in the house was when I knew, because Chaz had said to me, you can't win, you're not sort of average blokey enough to win. He said, you'll come third or fourth. <laughs> you'll, you'll come third or fourth. And my greatest moment in the house was, and I knew I was going to come first or second, and I knew I'd beaten Chaz, and that was the most, that was the most satisfying moment in the house. You know? Because it took me, for God's sakes, my whole life to get to a point where I am now that I can speak. Are you proud of, of what you did in the house? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know, in my own life, I, I don't think I could have come out any other way. The fact that I'm hot, sexy, driven and intelligent, but I'm still single. Perhaps one of the most inspirational characters to enter the Big Brother house was David Graham, the lonely the farmer from Gundawindi who bravely stronger. decided to come out on national straight. television. Yeah, I thought coming in here that I still was attracted to females, but Leaving this house, I know that I won't be at all. Dave, do you feel that you made a difference? I've received thousands and thousands of, of letters after the show for people saying thank you. You know, it's taken me five years to say thank you, but, you know, look, there there'd probably be between 10 and 20,000 responses that I've got from people that are saying that you've changed my life, you made it <laughs> OK for me to be me. And... In the end, the novelty of Big Brother wore thin. Long-time host Gretel Colleen was dumped replaced by Kyle Sanderlands and Jackie O. But the new show failed to deliver. After eight series, it was time to go Big Brother. For many who took part in this bold TV experiment, life would never be the same. Would you do it again? I used to say yes all the time. I just really, oh, all the time. But I think I'd find it hard now that I've got, um, you know, a family there to, to leave. Yes. Not to be known, just the experience. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's so much fun. Um, I wouldn't do it again, unlike no. Sarah Marie, but I did have fun while we were in there. It was a blast. Yeah. And I don't think that anyone who, who, who can talk about the show can take that away from the show, that we, we held a mirror up on ourselves and we said, you know what, I'm OK. It was great. I'd forgotten how good some parts of that show were. Well, next on A Current Affair, our restaurant 